Okay, this is the Department of Energy. They are really excited because of this fusion development. I created fission and fusion years ago, presented it to Fermilab and CERN and University of Geneva and everybody, and now they're finally catching up. I'll show you, we created fission and fusion seven, eight years ago. Okay, all the big particle guys ex agree this is the smallest particles that exist. One of them is a heavy-duty fixed particle, and one of them is a squishy little energy particle. That's what we found in our light experiments. We took these pictures with cell phones, smartphones, in about 2015 or so, using CMOS, which now they are just upgrading to being able to use CMOS at their huge particle colliders. They are just upgrading to use lasers instead of particle accelerators of huge protons. That's what fusion is based on. It's exactly what we did here. Virtually identical. We created fission right here, broke the black away from the white, and then fusion when it came back together. Here's our particles, which are light particles. These aren't from photons, uh, protons. We can watch these develop and then split. I'll show you that. You see, when they talk about neutrinos and photons and muons and electron showers, here it is right here, 100%. These are neutrinos. You see there's two blacks and a white? They're coming in here, and I can't explain this, so don't ask me to, <laughs> but I can see it. And then they turn into photons, which is the two blacks and two whites. As they stack up at the Venturi, they get more glowy, and then they explode. When they explode, the black and the white separate. And I will show you that. And then I'll show you the, them coming back together. Okay, pay close attention. That is the particle which creates a wave because it has a mag magnetic field in front. So the bubble of magnetism has to get through everybody else's magnetic field. And that's where you get this wave, but the particle is back here. Now the particle is accelerating because of the Venturi. But then it starts to bump into each other as it stacks up at the Venturi. So that's what causes the different flavors of neutrinos. Now it's and then it just explodes. Black separates from the white. Here, the black comes back to the white, because the white can't exist on its own for very long. I mean, this is like spontaneous, instantly, putting back together. This is light, uh, the speed of light, so it's right here. It's like maybe that far away from the Venturi. This, this is already blown up. Now, these are the interference patterns, because the black is trying to get back to the white, but the white wants, all the white wants to stay away, it creates these stripes. This is a single slit, it's not overlapping, flapping waves. This is really, literally, a subatomic nuclear explosion. When I say that, these are nuclear particles. Light is part of the nucleus. Light particles are the black and white particles I showed you. 1,823 of them together make up a proton. And protons are huge particles compared to what we're using. We're just using the light particles. And you see this reverse electromagnetic field back here? Just think of that reverse concussion coming back here. It's absolutely amazing. So the luminosity shows that we have increased the, the potential enormously. So I would say putting a collector right in here, we could harvest this raw energy. And that will burn the hell out of some. You want to see it burn some? I'll show you. And this will also prove that we have two different particles, the black one and the white one. The white one comes ahead of the black one. When they explode from the atomic bomb, the white one goes out first, burns everything, the black one comes next and knocks it down. Okay, my friends, this is going to prove my point right here. This is Adam Central, and this is the that's the station kind of channel, and they are going to show this this uh, test house and what happens when a nuclear bomb goes off. Now this is I think it's approximately four thousand feet away, almost a mile. Let's let's say a mile. I don't know for sure, but it's quite a ways away, and they are shooting off an atomic bomb. In my world, every particle that exists that is a proton and up exists of the dark matter on the inside 
surrounded by the white particles. All right? Every, every single molecule there is. The dark matter goes to the center. We never realize that. That's why they never can see the dark matter. All we ever see is the stuff that bounces back at us, which is the light. These bounce. These particles will bounce back. That doesn't do anything. It just pulls these particles in. So we never see the light coming out of there because there's no light. The only reason you see them in our experiments is because they block the brilliant luminosity behind it. They can block things, yes. Now, what was going to happen if, my, if I'm correct, which I am, <laughs> the white particles will come off first. Because this is a huge mass of just so many particles crammed into a small space that they want to fall apart already. And then they crush them in, and then they all go. Now, what will come first is the white. The white will hit this. If I am correct, which again, I am, this will just try to fuse these non-massive particles into their electrons. They'll just burn. They won't push anything. They don't really have any mass to speak of. Just the tiniest, 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 tiniest amount. This is a different story. This will come after these. Boom! This will burn up and then BAM! That hits and then they go. Will that prove that there's two particles? Yes, it will. Can I show it? Yes, I can. Are you ready for it? Yes, you are. Okay, don't forget, the first thing that hits has no mass, but it burns like hell, these white ones. Here it goes. Now, i got to run them very slow. I'm just going to let it go. The first thing is just a big glow, which is when the white ones hit. All right, so here it goes. Boom, it's going to be just as white as white gets. And that's all it's going. Look, it's just burning. It didn't knock anything down. What's going to come next is going to be the black ones. Bam! And then it just goes like crazy. Watch. Boom! There it goes. Now, now watch. It's going to turn around and come back. Look at it come back. You see it? Watch this. It's coming back. Well, why would it come back? It's First of all, there's a void in the, where everything went. But there's still going to be some gravity back there, which is still some dark matter. Something's in that hole. It's just not nothing which is sort of something interesting to <laughs> on its own. Because what it has, everything went, what's in the middle there? Everything's coming back, so maybe there is nothing. I don't know. But I can tell you what, when that thing hit, here's where I want to see. When look, Right now, we can know that that is just as burning, that would just, you'd vaporize. Just like the house is vaporizing. It's not going anywhere. We know that is hot, and no mass. When we see the black come, we know that it's just 100% mass, and I say no hot. Here it comes. Boom. Now, what is it hitting? It's just, boom, get out of my way. Everything goes. I would say at this point, these are like absolute zero. I bet you this, if you could measure right now the temperature here, you'd be almost absolute zero. It would probably be very, very, very cold, but it's just a mix, it would be mixing, but if you could measure this coming at it when it was all by itself, I'll bet you this would be almost absolute zero, because you got one end of the scale here burning like crazy, you got the other scale, it has it, it, no burn, but a lot of movement, and no movement and a lot of burn, so it just makes sense. <laughs> okay, so here's my artist rendition. <laughs> Here's our nuclear bomb blast. Everything is coming out like a nuclear bomb. And right here, it burns the house. The first thing would be this white. It would burn the house. Then the black would come and just smash the house to bits. Now, we're using a whole different story because of the Venturi down here. And by the way, just so you understand what a Venturi is, hold on one second. Here is what a Venturi is. And here's what the pinch is all about. What we had was right here, two round, literally nails. It's just nails. And they were set like this, right about like that. Only the white could get through. The black ones, the balls were like this big. They couldn't get through there. 
and they go out and they get around and then I think the black ones are just laying around extra because well, how would they get back to here to get to back to these whites when they're back here? Alright, I, I think they're just laying around here waiting to jump onto a black one. Is there more, I mean, uh, the white ones, is there more black ones just all by themselves laying around? I think there is. I think there is. That's all I can take from it. And I also think it might have something to do with the migration of heat. Because heat moves and heat has weight. If you put, heat something that's solid and cannot expand, it will get heavier. Heat has weight. So I know, that, and these are the only things really have enough weight to do any, to, to be measurable. So the heat must have something to do with the black. There's a lot of thinking to do here once you go into the, the, the new nuclear model, which is right here. That's all that exists, those two particles. That's all that exists. And we can break them apart, and they float freely by themselves out in space. The blacks can be apart from the white. And I, I know that for a fact because of the Russian experiment they did out in outer space. But this is what a Venturi looks like. It's just where everything has to funnel together. So we're doing exactly the same thing as two magnetic fields hitting head to head. We're forcing them to hit side to side. There's nothing more than head to head. Side to side in a magnetic field, it's a round ball. So it's not like you got to hit here or here or here. As long as they crush together, that's head to head. We're doing exactly what they're doing at CERN and Fermilab. I got to show you something. This is so cool. We're going to go back to that um, Department of Energy conference there in a minute. But right here is where the Higgs fields show up. And, and, and right now you have pure raw white. And here you have pure sterile black muons. This is a pure electron shower. That has to come back together somehow. How does it reattach to the black? Well, we see the blacks sort of pushing their way into the whites, and that's exactly what happens. They wrap right around, a white wraps right around a black. Where do you see this? It is phenomenal stuff. All right, you saw the part of your wave, and then you saw it accelerating, and you saw it dividing and separating. These are the Higgs fields that come out. This is like we're looking straight into the laser. Just like we're looking straight into this way. And out at us is coming these Higgs fields. These are Higgs fields. You see? Them? These tips of these fields are recombining with the black. Here's the tips right here. You see the black is being absorbed by the white. Only on the tips. Inside here and there is one or two that do it. But in these back they haven't attached yet to the black, but the tips have. This is the process of right here, coming into these Higgs fields. Isn't that something? Now this is what the Russians did in space. They created this black hole in a vacuum chamber with charged particles. They put them in here and it created a black hole. It pushed all the dark matter to the center and all the charged particles surrounded it. This is what black holes are. And I tried getting a hold of Fermilab and the Russians at the same time. I copied Don Lincoln and the Russians at the same time. It didn't work out well. But that is what... I mean, I'm showing... You know, I had all this information like seven years ago. It's very, very difficult to get through to people to show it to them. And, um, and I'm still in that position. And I think I'm showing some pretty serious experimental information that has very, very serious consequences if it's true. And I believe it's true. All right, we're going to get back to the Department of Energy. But here's my idea. Using the, what we did, I, I think we've increased the value of this energy just exponentially. Luminosity is the, the measure of the value of the energy. And that is as luminous as you get. And it is a totally monopole separated the, the muon from the electron shower. Now, could this work? Maybe. It certainly should be looked into. Because if it could work, this is not a grid-oriented solution. This is a handheld solution. You could have any power you want. From, use a European 50 cycle, 60 cycle, AC, DC, USB, MIC, KEY, MOUSA, anything you want.
all in a little box like this, carry it around. This could be in your car, power your car, you never have to stop. And I'm telling you right now, if they're, if they're right about the values of these electron volts, we should easily be able to a car, or do a car or a house with something this size. You can go out in the woods with this, fight fires, pump water, keep people up and running when they're in the emergencies and all that stuff. It's time to look at this in a whole new way. You know, I kid around, I tease around a lot, and that's the only way I can do it because nobody will listen. And I'm hoping somebody will listen, and I'm sick of making jokes about things. I'd like to see some, something done that's real. All right, so don't forget, we have to at least consider my new electron flood theory. I'm showing these particles. Those particles are part of light. Light is part of photon, uh, protons. Light is part of matter. It's not nothing. They say it's massless. And that's what they still believe. I'm not kidding you. Don Lincoln at Fermilab still believes photons are massless. I think they all do. They've been so indoctrinated they cannot turn around and even look at the evidence. I've tried to present this to Don Lincoln for years now, and he just absolutely refuses. I mean, he doesn't refuse that it's wrong or anything. He just refuses to engage because they are so wedded to these huge particle colliders that they're scared they're going to use, lose their funding. I understand that, but I'm sorry. It's more important that we get free energy than your funding, my friend. And my new theory is not just a theory. It has a lot of guts to it. And these are my claims that these are the only two particles that exist. Exactly what Lincoln, Don Lincoln said. There's only two particles that they could find, the smallest ones. Everything is made of those. It's as simple as that, and I have I have the details down. I, I can't really get down to weights and all that business because I really don't have the, the equipment to do that, but I don't think they do either. They just don't even know what they're doing, so I don't see how they can possibly come up with these weights. They don't understand their particles, what the particles are. How could they come up with the weights? You know, I showed you some of my stuff, and I am going to go into their stuff. I made a decision. It's just going to run very, very, very long because everybody's talking about it now. It's just streamed, you know, yesterday, a day ago, a day ago, yesterday, and these are all people, that, and, and they're just being wide open about it. They're patting themselves on the back pretty good, but that's okay. I can go along with that. I just wanted to get understood what this nuclear fission is all about, fission and fusion. And right now, because they don't understand the nucleus is a dipole, they're, they're going to have a whole lot of trouble ever understanding what they're seeing. It's just that's a fact. So I'm going to get deep into this, and I mean deep. So if you're interested, part twos will be coming up. But part one's just going to run too long to get into this. They are getting into details and as they get into their details I will speak to their details with my details.